Hi there, it's Allison Gray. I'm here from Resiliency Ninja, and welcome to the very first Storytime Sunday, where I'm going to read to you from my book, Married My Mom, Birth the Dog, How to Be Resilient When Life Sucks. Because let's face it, every now and again, life sucks. So I am going to read little bit each Sunday just to get a feel for the book and hopefully if you love it you'll get your own copy you can buy it at any uh, major retailer online uh, and come visit me at resiliencyninja.com there are lots of other tools there for you as well and please share so uh, I'm going to put on to the spectacles for Storytime Sunday and let's go I, I thought maybe the first time we just start at chapter one which is called whack-a-mole. Right. Despite all the blessings of being alive, there are times when life just sucks. Life is a master at beating us up in gut-wrenching ways that are out of our control. Unfortunately, as adults, we're not afforded the luxury of wallowing in our problems, even when we want to hide under our blankets, scream in defeat, and wait for the universe to make everything peachy keen again. I've tried that. It doesn't work. Instead, we must strike our best superhero pose in front of the proverbial fan as it blows high velocity shit in our face. And we have to do so with a big smile because heaven forbid, if we slip and fail publicly, what would they think? In the end, it does not matter what everyone else thinks. It matters what you think. The uninvited peanut gallery, gallery that spews judgment is not the benchmark by which to measure success, especially when even the slightest negative views are magnified by the unforgiving voice inside of your head. Do you remember playing the game Whack-A-Mole? When I was young, I would play it at summer fairs. It was a lot of fun to use that big foam hammer to whack down those plastic moles as they're, uh, into their holes as they popped. When I was pretty good at hitting the first few, but as the moles started appearing and disappearing more quickly, it proved to be too much for my hammering skills. <laughs> Another mole appeared faster, faster, and faster, and sooner rather than laser, later I'd lose. Little did I know that game would become a metaphor for my future. Have you ever felt like life is an unending game of full-size whack-a-mole, swatting down one problem just in time for another to erupt? On Christmas Eve 2008, I had my fourth and final surgery to fix the ramifications from an earlier botched surgery that caused unrelenting neuropathic pain and other complications. Weeks later, there was a string of sudden deaths of people close to me. I was heartbroken, shaken to my core. Intellectually, I knew there was light at the end of the tunnel, but there were many dark days when I just couldn't see its glow or feel its warmth. Days after attending my fifth funeral in three months, I had a lunch meeting with two bigwigs from an investment firm. We met to discuss how I could help their advisors get more sales and network more effectively. Trust me, there is irony in that statement. Physically, I was in excruciating pain. And emotionally, I was beyond spent. It was not the first time I had forced myself to act professionally while ignoring my personal nightmares. But this time was different. The moles were erupting and they were winning. My heart was heavy and my body was weak. The prospective clients talked and all I heard was blah, blah, blah. With each passing minute, I daydreamed of my couch, comfy clothes and a full DVR of TV shows just waiting to help me go numb. It was the worst lunch meeting conversation I've ever had and it was my fault, just painful. It's the kind of teeth pulling, one word answers, nothing is flowing discussion that makes people loathe getting to know you business meetings. I can't be sure, but I think at one point they ignored me and just started talking with each other. If they didn't, they may as well have, I was a yawn. To, encouraging, to encourage some interesting comments from my side at the table, 
One prospect asked, what hobbies fill your spare time? For a split second, I recognized this was my chance to turn around this lackluster impression I was making and save the deal. I could say anything interesting. I love downhill skiing, sailing, hiking, volunteering for charities, politics, you name it. I had many good answers. What did I say? Let's leave it there. You'll have to read the book to find out or hear me speak because I often tell that story. Uh, anyway, that uh, was the very first Storytime Sunday. And so in future weeks, what I'll do is I'll just you know, spin it open, find another chapter and start reading for a little bit. The book is set up where it's my story. I'll share a little anecdote, something that happened, the lessons I glean from it, and then give you the tools so that you can apply them in your own life. Okay. And then there are some coaching questions at the end of every chapter, uh, that are the whole resiliency ninja formula. So thanks for so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and share it on your social media feeds as well to help me get the word out. I think a lot of people are really having a tough time out there and this book can help them to bounce back faster and stronger and no matter what is coming at you. So uh, again, Alison Graham, ResiliencyNinja.com and until next time, see you later.